What's up, brothers and sisters in Christ? May the joy of the Lord be our strength, especially in these last seconds of the end of days. Um, I'm going to get into this really quickly because this is a very, very important video. The Lord is not playing games. God is not playing games anymore. It is time to truly give it your all or nothing. See, we need to understand that God is holy beyond our comprehension. God is holy. God is worthy. God is mighty. And God is seriously angry. He's angry, but he is long suffering, not willing anyone should perish and go to hell for all of eternity. God's will is not that one should spend an eternity separated from him. But we all have free will and don't underestimate your free will. The path is narrow, guys. And God gave me some scripture as I was weeping with him. Okay, I, I have been weeping lately because God is allowing me to go through the fire. He's allowing me. He's testing my faith. And I'm giving it all to him because he's worthy and because I know how serious this is. We're living in such a wicked generation as Sodom and Gomorrah. And I'm going to plead to anybody watching this video right now. Don't look to me. Look to Jesus Christ. I want to be a light post for the glory of God. But this is his word and his word I'm going to speak today. His word, I pray that someone will heed this warning, that someone would come to true repentance and follow God, follow Christ Jesus. Give him your everything. Because this word, these few scriptures that God gave me, I pray will change your life. His word will not return void. It doesn't matter. Don't believe in me. Don't look to me. Don't look to Colton from Seeking Wisdom Ministries as your salvation or who you are supposed to look up to. Look to God. He is jealous for you. He wants you. He wants a personal, intimate relationship. He wants you to know him. He wants to know you. Because there is many that do not know him. There's many who are walking in unfaithfulness and iniquity. And this is his word. I'm going to start in Hebrews 5, 7 real quick. And you know, I don't know how many of you guys know if this is your first time. I got in a car wreck uh, October 23rd. I rolled over eight times. I should have died. But by the grace of God, I'm living. You know, um... It was an accident in my Honda Accord, and it had lane departure assist, and I was going on a 70 miles per hour lane, and I was going the speed limit around 70 miles per hour, maybe four over, five over, and the lane departure assist uh, got too close to the line apparently, and it jerked me to the left, jerked me to the right, and I spun out of control, and then I ended up rolling 70 miles per hour eight times. I felt every single turn, and I knew that there was a bubble of protection around me, and I was so, so so thankful that I did not have one scratch. I walked out of that vehicle and someone saw me roll over eight times because I didn't know, but they told me I saw you across the median. I had jumped over. I almost wrecked myself to come see you to see if there was going to be a dead body. But I saw a kid. He saw me. He saw me walking out of that car alive. And he said, I don't know how you're alive right now. I got on my knees and I cried. And I said, because of Jesus Christ, because of Jesus Christ. Okay. And this is not something that boasted me. I boast in God. I should have died. But God lived. I lived. And I, and I don't know how many of you guys saw that, that video, but I said I, the Lord told me to pray. I, had about, I was heading from Nashville to Kentucky to do ministering. And the Lord told me, pray this last hour. I want you to pray the whole time. Well, 15 minutes into praying in the spirit, praying hardcore in the spirit while I was driving is when the wreck happened and he protected me. And now I'm looking at Hebrews 5, 7 through 10. And this is what it says. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. So, you know, this is talking about Jesus Christ. I understand that, but his word, you can hit it from multiple angles. God can give you revelation. His word is alive. It's active. It's not just one meaning. There are so many hidden meetings that, meanings that God wants you to know. If you just seek him and pray and ask, and God opened up my eyes, I was praying. I was offering up supplications. I was crying while I was praying to him because I cry. I weep. I weep. I'm not afraid to admit that. I weep before the Lord. And he saved me from death because I feared him. And I learned the obedience by the things which I suffered. I suffered that wreck, but now it's a testimony to glorify his name. Next, um, I'm going to go to John. But I want to stop real quick and I want to ask you guys, how many of you guys are suffering 
Okay, it's okay that you're suffering. You're going to suffer for Jesus Christ in these last days. We live in a wicked generation where evil is called good and good is called evil. But there's a time and there's a decision that you need to make within yourself. Are you going to serve God? Are you going to give him your all? Are you only going to give him some part of your life? Because guess what? We cannot do that and go to heaven. We cannot give him a portion of his, our life. God is jealous. He died and he set, he, he, he set us free from the bondage of the enemy. But you have not yet come into that realization. You'll never be free. You'll never walk in freedom that God wants you to have if you continually only seek him half-heartedly. Jesus is strive. Anybody who's telling you that you don't have to strive is going against what Jesus Christ said when he said strive to enter the narrow gate. For many will try. Many will try. Do we not believe in the words of Jesus? Why do we let men manipulate us in these lasted days with a form of godliness denying the power thereof to set them free? Why do you believe them rather than the words of God? Get in his word. And let's look in his word. I got two verses. John 12, uh, 25 and 26. Let's look at this. This is the words of Jesus, guys. We're living in wicked generation where there's so much deception. So many people want to lure you away from obeying Jesus Christ. When it says in Acts 5, 32, this is after Jesus died, resurrected, and was buried and gifted the Holy Spirit. He, it says that in Acts 5, 32, that he gives the Holy Spirit to those who obey him. Don't believe that we do not have to obey Jesus Christ. We need to obey him. Out of love, not out of because we have to or are moaning or groaning. No, there's not a changed heart then. You don't understand. You have not been circumcised of the heart. He's not given you a new heart yet if you're moaning and groaning. There needs to be an implantation of a new heart with the laws written on your heart out of the love and the gratitude that he died for you. He died for me. Thank God. It says, he that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also be my servant. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. I want to be one of those who serve him, who abide in him, and ready to forsake everything for the glory of my father, because this life is just short. This life is a temporary thing, of a shadow of things that which are to come. But if you decide to love this life more than lose your life for his love, then you will lose it. But if you lose your life for his name's sake, you shall find it. If you lose your life and you hate this life in this world, it's okay to hate this life in this world. Jesus says, he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life. It's okay to hate this life, but it's not okay to hate God. It's not okay to be a backbiter of God. It's not okay to rebel against God because the son, the wrath of God is upon the sons of disobedience, guys. Wake up, generation. We're living in the last of days. It's a narrow path to eternal life. But God is faithful to those who call upon his name. He is faithful. Let's go to Ezekiel 14, 12 and 14. Ezekiel 14, 12. The whole word of God is so prophetic. The word of God, if you just open up your eyes in the sense of saying, God, open up my eyes. God, open up my ears. God, open up my heart. I want, you, I want to hear from you. I want to receive from you. He will show you things. Proverbs 25, verse 2, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the heart of a king to search out the matter. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I want to seek God. I don't want to fear man. I don't want to be a pleaser of man. I want to be a pleaser of God. I want to fear God. I love my creator, and I do not want to go to hell. I don't. Guys, I'm not a perfect being, but I know that I have a perfect creator who is perfectly gracious enough to give me strength to meet my needs. Hallelujah. Let's look at this. The word of the Lord came unto, again unto me, saying, Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then I will stretch out my hand upon it, and I will break the staff of bread thereof, and I will send famine upon it, and I will cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, if they were in it, they should deliver but only their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. Do you know we're in, we're in a land where sinneth and, and continue? It's called about continuing unfaithfulness, continuing trespassing against God grievously. Then God will stretch upon it, send famine, cut bread, send wars, all these sort of things. Cut off man. <laughs> and can't we see that that's what exactly God has done, except around the whole world? Famine, viruses, wars, riots. We're living in the last days, guys. Someone's got to step back and be like, whoa. Yeah, this 19-year-old kid, he's screaming at me about repentance, about Jesus Christ. And I want to believe him. But like, at the same time, I do see what he's talking about. Someone's got to wake up and step back and say out of their own selves, out of their own lives and say, whoa, something's going on. 
I want to know what it is. If Jesus is real, if Jesus is real, then I want to be safe in him. I want to be abiding in him. I want to do what thou will is, Father, not my own will. Someone, please heed this warning. I, I want someone to heed this warning because I'm pleading, knowing the terrors of the Lord, we persuade men, knowing the terrors of the Lord, I'm persuading someone today. Come, repent, go to God, turn to Jesus Christ, allow him to heal you. Do not harden your heart today. Man, only three men, if they were in this generation, they would only deliver their own souls by their righteousness. People need to stop being so self-righteous. Yes, there are many Pharisees who are self-righteous, who are only clean on the outside but dirty on the inside. But the reality is, is if you are in Christ, you will be clean on the inside and outside. It's a, it's a grace. It's a measure of cup. It says, Jesus says, if your righteousness does not exceed that of a Pharisee, you'll never enter the kingdom of God. Obviously, no, what Daniel and Job had their own righteousness. But our righteousness is of the Lord. Yeah, it is. Our righteousness is of Jesus Christ who gives and imputes us unto righteousness by how? Faith. But without it, it's impossible to please God. So don't profess a faith if you really don't have any righteousness. It's a righteousness from him. Imputed unto you, walking it out, being a light. But you shall know them by their fruit, Jesus says. Oh, but don't judge a book by its cover. Well, Jesus says, judge a book by its cover. You shall know them by their fruit. And I'm going to end it in this, guys. Matthew 19, 29 and 30. This is the words of Jesus Christ. And everyone that hath forsaken houses... And brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Sometimes you're going to have to leave everything for the glory of God. Sometimes if you're in a situation where God does not want you to be around this person, or this, or that, or the other, or land, or house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands... You're going to have to leave it all. You're going to have to leave it all and it may hurt, but God is worthy. Give it all to God today. Give it all to God today and come to the altar of the Lord in your heart. Come to the end of yourself. Lose your life for his name's sake. Salvation is the most important thing in the whole world and God gave it as a free gift and we don't deserve it. But you need to respond. There needs to be a covenant made. A covenant takes two. God gave his son, but now you need to receive him. Receive him today. God bless you all. We're living in crazy days. We're living in 2020 is the year of distractions. 2020 is the year to don't get caught up in politics. Who's president, who's not, because we serve a king and a kingdom, not of this world. We're not a part of this world. We're not a part of the government. We are to submit to the government and rulers and authority, but we are to submit fully unto God. Because when they come to your house and they want to put you a, vac a vaccine on you, are you going to take it? Are you going to take it? Are you going to forsake it? Are you going to be willing to give your all to God and die for faith? Because it's coming down to a point where there is going to be wars, earthquakes. There's going to be people who are going to die. Family members are going to be weeping like never before. And it is coming soon. Don't mark my words. Mark the word of God that has been playing out just as it said. God is faithful and his word is held higher than his name. The name above all names, Jesus Christ, God of the universe. You will stand before him one day. What will he say to you? Depart from me. I never knew you worker of iniquity. Even though you casted out devils, done many miracles and works for his name. I don't want that. I forsake all that I may know the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you.